speaker is uh, Mathilde Macang, uh, who will tell us about the homogeneous spaces in characteristic two and three. Thanks very much. Yeah, sorry for the start. So um, I'm a second year PhD student and thanks for the invitation. I work with uh, Mathieu Romani in Rennes and Michel Brion in Grenoble. Uh, so we're gonna talk about, in this 20 minutes, we're gonna talk about homogeneous spaces in characteristic two and three. So we're gonna focus on some notation, which everyone is probably used to, and then a little bit what happens in prime characteristic and why we should be careful. Then what is known, so stating some results that are already known, then the questions that we asked ourselves, and then I'll give one result and if time permits, a couple of ideas on how to prove it. Uh, so first of all, we fix K and algebraically for closed field. For now, we don't fix any characteristic and we fix G, V and T, a semi-simple algebraic group, a Borel subgroup contained in it and a maximal torus. And we want to study parabolic subgroups. So subgroups that are in between a Borel subgroup and the group G. Uh, the notation and when we consider the Lie algebra and the T action on it by conjugation, we have the following decomposition. So we're going to denote um, as uh, G gamma, the root spaces, and phi is going to be uh, our root system. I'm going to denote as gamma any root and as alpha a simple positive root. So delta is going to be a basis and alpha is going to denote in everything that follows a simple root. Uh, the aim is to study uh, projective varieties, which are homogeneous under homogeneous spaces under a G action. Uh, this translates on the other side into the study of parabolic subgroups. And since uh, there are, each parabolic is conjugate to a parabolic containing B, we can fix the Borel subgroup and just study the parabolics that um, contain B. So this is what we're going to do. Uh, so something about prime characteristic, the behavior is not going to be the same as the one that we used to oversee. This is mostly because of the Frobenius homomorphism. So this is something that we can see as a map from G to itself, which is um, uh, a homomorphism of group schemes. So it is the identity uh, as a topological map. And on functions, we can see it as uh, something that sends a function to its p power. So here we fix uh, p as a prime number, which is the characteristic of our field. And so we introduce the notation of g1 and more generally gm as being the kernel of this morphism. This is something that cannot happen in characteristic zero, meaning that we have a normal subgroup whose uh, support topologically is trivial, uh, with it, it, it is an infinitesimal uh, subgroup, but it is not trivial as a group. It has no trivial functions. And also something which is also very weird is that its Lie algebra is the same as the Lie algebra of G. And you can see a sort of proof, the easiest way I have found to see it on the right. So the Lie algebra is the tangent vector at the identity that belongs to the Frobenius kernel. But if you develop the condition of being in the Frobenius kernel, we get a trivial condition. So this is satisfied for any tangent vector because we see epsilon squared as equal to zero. So epsilon to the pth power is going to be equal to zero. And the Lie algebra is going to be the same. Um, so one example which explains pretty much everything that happens next. Uh, the not, I, I, I think it's a bit sloppy. It means notation. So we fix alpha uh, a simple root, and we associate to alpha uh, p alpha, which is a maximal parabolic subgroup, maximal reduced, because we have seen that we can have the Frobenius kernel is an example of a non-reduced uh, group scheme. So in characteristic p, we might have no reduced group schemes. And this is seen as the reduced parabolic subgroup, which has a Levy subgroup the one having root system delta without alpha. So this is an example on the right where we fix the group is SLN uh, and we fix uh, alpha M as um, a simple root. And then we take the, the drawing on the right represents the parabolic subgroup, which is associated to that root. And we can see an example, if we are in prime characteristic, this is an example of 
a parabolic subgroup whose reduced parabolic subgroup is um, the one associated to alpha two, so the second, uh, the second root, and which is not reduced. And how do we get the non-reducedness? We multiply by a Frobenius kernel. So that's by adding the condition on the two coefficients, g and h to the pth power are equal to zero. Um, and this is now reduced and it's reduced uh, subgroup is p alpha two. Uh, so what do we know about general parabolic subgroups in characteristic p? Uh, first of all, what do we know over about reduced ones? So all of them, if we are working over c, so all parabolic subgroups over C are of the form. So we fix a, sub a subset of delta and we intersect all of the parabolic subgroups which are associated to uh, those roots. And we get all possible parabolic subgroups uh, this way. Uh, then we pass on to positive characteristic. So from now until uh, the rest of the talk, we're gonna have, uh, we're gonna fix P, uh, a prime, uh, integer and it's going to be um, the characteristic of our field. We're not going to work in over C anymore. Uh, the result is the one from Wenzel. Uh, he proved that if we have the following condition, so either P uh, is uh, at least equal to five or the group is simply laced, which means that uh, if we look at the, the Dinkin diagram, it does not have any multiple edges. So it's going to be type A, D or E. So under these assumptions, then any parabolic subgroup, it's going to be of the form. So we fix, again, I as a subset, uh, a subset of delta. And we just add a little bit of non-reducedness. So as we have seen uh, in the previous example in this slide, we just modify this way a little bit our parabolic. We multiply by a Frobenius kernel of some um, height. So we fix integers uh, m alpha, and then we, we multiply this by P alpha, and we intersect all of this uh, over, over delta uh, minus I. And he proved that uh, any parabolic subgroup is of this form under these assumptions. So um, this is what was known. And um, we asked ourselves uh, if we do not assume if we take the other cases, so either P is equal to two or p is equal to three. And also our group is not simply laced. So it's one of the diagrams on, um, uh, on the right. So it's either of type B, C, F, four or G, two. Um, the first natural question would be, uh, are we able to classify all parabolic subgroups? And this, is, this has not been done yet. I, I still don't know how to do it. And then an easier question would be, can we classify at least all parabolic subgroups whose reduced subgroup is a, a maximal one. So this, uh, we have done it. It's not being published yet. It's still work in progress, but we know how to do it. I am not gonna talk about it. We can talk about it later. I think we'll have some time uh, because it involves other tools and other definitions, uh, which we don't have time to explore. And another even easier question would be to classify all uh, quotients, so whole homogeneous projective spaces of this form, G over P, uh, such that their Picard group is a uh, Frank one. Uh, and this is what we're gonna talk about in the few next uh, slides. Um, why uh, is this question related to the, the previous one? Because if, um, the reduced part, the reduced subgroup of P is given by the intersection of uh, the ones associated to alpha one and alpha M for some uh, simple roots alpha one and up to alpha M. Then using Bruhat cells uh, and the Bruhat decomposition, uh, we can see that its Picard group is a Frank M. So uh, studying the, the parabolic subgroups, uh, which whose reduced is maximal, are exactly the one uh, which give as a quotient a variety which has Picard isomorphic to Z. So, and the third question is a little bit easier than the first one because uh, we can we might be able to express X, X um, in two different ways as a quotient. So classifying varieties is easier a priori than classifying parabolics. So this is what we're gonna uh, talk about now. 
the, the main result, the main theorem is that, so we fix uh, a projective variety, which is homogeneous under a faithful G action. The faithfulness assumption um, does not impact the classification of varieties. If the action is not faithful, we just replace G by its image in the automorphism group. And then we assume that the Picard group is isomorphic to Z. Then we can show that um, the variety is isomorphic to G over P with G uh, a maximal reduced parabolic. Here, I have not put any assumption on the characteristic. So in characteristic zero, it is um, trivial because any, the reducedness is trivial because any parabolic is smooth. Um, by Wenzel's theorem, um, we just add a Frobenius kernel. So there is an isomorphism of variety with, with uh, a parabolic subgroup, which is reduced as a stabilizer. And so uh, the non-trivial part is to prove this when we are in very small characteristic. Uh, I just give an example to understand how this works. Uh, in type uh, A, if G is SLN and we take just um, a quotient of G by a parabolic subgroup without assuming that the action is faithful, and we assume that the Picard group is isomorphic to Z, this is equivalent to asking that the reduced subgroup is P alpha for some root, which is by Wenzel the Wenzel's theorem equivalent to saying that P is a Frobenius kernel of order some M multiplied by P alpha. So we get this um, action. So it's just G, um, the variety is isomorphic, isomorphic, isomorphic as a variety to G over P alpha. It's just that the action is twisted by the mth power of the Frobenius morphism. But this shows why the, um, the result is true, at least for SLN. Are there any questions so far? Uh, okay. If not, I can take a few minutes to give an idea of um, the proof. So there are mainly two steps. The first one consists in showing that, so we take X, um, the quotient of G by P, and we have the assumption on the parabolic subgroup. If P is non-reduced, then we can show that the Lie algebra of P is either or, or uh, the entire Lie algebra of G, which I recall is equal to the Lie algebra of the Frobenius kernel, or some other condition which uh, we cannot explore today because I have no time to define it. Uh, it's just there is a similar reasoning for this condition. So n is going to be a subgroup which is smaller than the Frobenius kernel. It's normal, and uh, we can show that the other case is that the Lie algebra of n is contained in the Lie algebra of p, and the subgroup does not exists in all cases. So there are some more hypotheses in half of the cases it, it exists and the other half it does not. Um, and then how do we conclude for, from this? Uh, we use the equivalence of categories between P Lie subalgebra of the Lie algebra of G on one side, and then uh, on the other side, the subgroups of the Venus kernel, so which are called the subgroups of height one of G. And if we restrict that on one side to ideals and on the other side to normal subgroups, this stays um, a bijection. And we have that um, under this equivalence of categories, on one side we have the Lie algebra of G and on the other side we have the Frobenius kernel. So using this result, uh, we know that the Lie algebra of P is equal to the Lie algebra of G uh, if and only if the Frobenius kernel is contained in P. However, we assumed at the beginning uh, in the statement of the theorem that the action was faithful. So uh, the stabilizer cannot contain a normal non-trivial subgroup inside of it. So this gives us a contradiction, which means going back to what we assumed that P must be uh, a reduced subgroup actually. Uh, some, so uh, a few words to say, how do we prove uh, step one? So this is what we aim to prove. Um, first, we consider the Levy subgroup of uh, P alpha, and then this acts on the vector space given by the quotient of the Lie algebra of G uh, by the Lie algebra of P alpha. And inside of it, we have uh, some module, which is given by the quotient 
of Li uh, P by Li uh, of its reduced subgroup. And we know that this last sub vector space is not trivial because we assume that P is non reduced. And so we study this representation. We can ask, uh, I mean, if this is already an irreducible representation, then we are done, but it's not always the case, but it's very concrete. So it's a, it's a matrix action on some vector space and we can calculate it. Five um, minutes. Okay, thanks. Um, and then, so the second step uh, consists in using this lemma on roots, which is due to Chevalet. Uh, if we consider two roots gamma and delta, whose sum is also root, a root. So in particular, we take a delta, which is different from plus and minus gamma. Uh, and then we consider the, the delta string, which goes through gamma uh, and we denote as uh, the uh, gamma minus r delta the last root. So if we go to uh, r plus r plus one, then it's not going to be a root anymore. And on the other side, the same thing. So if we go to q plus n plus one, then it's not going to be a root anymore. Uh, then the lemma says that when we do the bracket of the corresponding root spaces, uh, we're going to get the the structure constant is going to be plus or minus r plus plus one. And if these numbers are integers and they they go from one to four. So in this step, we see where the characteristic comes into play because if the characteristic is two or three, then some of those coefficients might vanish. So if we try to use this lemma, then we need to be really careful uh, because in some cases this might not give uh, what we want because it might vanish. So we need some additional arguments. Um, and so on. So thank you for your attention. And uh, do you have any questions or things I should go over again? Yeah, very nice talk. Um, <laughs> any questions 